Well, these tomatoes are growing fast. Got to be adding strings quicker than this. This side is a little bit better, but this side is falling on the ground already. So I'm going to add my tomato string for the floor to weave. And Ryan is stretching out soaker hoses for the corn. Mommy. We've got basil and marigolds all underneath the tomatoes. And something else I don't want under my tomatoes is leaves that are close enough that they can get the splash on them and get blight. So I'm going to remove anything from this string down. Another hot busy day on the homestead. We are trying to get this garden back under control. It's been a couple of weeks since we've actually done much work down here. So we're spending a work day down here trying to get things caught up. Gonna put some fertilizer on the tomatoes. I usually use tomato tone, but I ran out. So I have some garden tone to put on these. Mommy. Yeah, you're doing it? <laughs> He loves to help. Getting some irrigation done, getting some trellising fixed, maybe some weeds under control. It's kind of hard to do that. So we try to make it as weed free as possible, but it's going to have some competition down here. It's just something we have to accept. That's just another one of the reasons why I really love my raised bed gardens. They have no weeds in them, like a few here and there that the birds dropped in, but there's no weed seeds in the soil because it's soil I brought in that was weed seed free. And gosh, does that make it easier. So something that is really important to remember about horticulture and plants in general is that there is a very firm rule. You should never cut more than one third of the plant you are cutting. So I saw a really sad post in one of my local gardening groups the other day on Facebook. And it was a picture of a tomato plant with nothing but the very top leaf left on the plant. It had one leaf at the top. The entire stem had been completely removed of any suckers and any leaves. Now I know that there is a new trend in gardening where people like to single stem their tomatoes and that does work in some growing situations like greenhouses that are doing um, completely different growing conditions, but it's actually can be very detrimental to your plants to remove more than a third of the biomass on the plant. So her post was, why are my tomatoes not getting any bigger? She had some small little green tomatoes and, and they were supposed to be a big beefsteak variety and they weren't getting any bigger and they were showing signs of beginning to ripen. And it is 100% because she removed too much from the plant. So it's really important that you pay attention to the one third rule. These plants need to be able to photosynthesize to produce fruit. So if they can't photosynthesize because there's not enough leaf on the plant, they won't. So I don't even, I remove about one third of the suckers on the bottom just so that there's not going to be any splashing up and blight issues. That's the only reason why I remove those suckers. Suckers are not something that needs to be removed. If you really want to learn more about how tomatoes are truly supposed to grow, they are a vine and suckers aren't even suckers. They are a branch. If you want to learn more about that, I have a video all about it. I'll leave it in the comment down below. So something that makes me a little bit different than other people who love to grow tomatoes is a lot of tomato growers do not like fused blooms. So this is a fused bloom. It's caused by fasciation. Fasciation is when the tissue mutates and can produce multiple blooms in one cluster. Me personally, I love the tomatoes that grow on this. They are extra, extra huge tomatoes because they're trying to produce multiple tomatoes in one fruit. So they end up being very large 
and very delicious. On the tomato that is pruced from this, what you're gonna see is that it's gonna be cat-faced. It's gonna have blemishes on the blossom end of the tomato. Those blemishes don't taste bad, they don't rot, they are nothing bad. You just slice them up and eat them. And that is why I like cat-faced tomatoes and I leave these blooms. If you don't like cat-faced tomatoes, just pinch that one off. So if you're like me and you love ugly tomatoes, leave those fasciated blooms. But I just noticed that even the stem is fasciated. Let me show you. Check that out. These stems are fused together all the way up to the bloom. Oftentimes it's only just right at the base of the bloom where it becomes fasciated. But this one goes all the way down about here. It feels like a normal stem below this junction. So this was probably a vine that was gonna grow off and it, instead it fused and it grew together with the main stem. Speaking of ugly tomatoes and cat facing, look at this one. See, I just think that's the coolest looking tomato in all the world. And I love it, it's so cute. I was just telling Ryan how awesome these tomatoes are looking. They're very healthy. Really deep green, full of new blooms. Tomatoes are setting. And I was about to say, and no sign of tomato hornworm. And then I looked down right before it came out of my mouth. So while I don't see an actual hornworm, I do see caterpillar frass. That is the poop of a caterpillar. Judging by seeing the poop on this leaf, I want to immediately look up. What is the first leaf I see when I look up? That's how I usually find them. Usually, I turn that over and they're right there. I don't see, now this one's gonna be tiny. It's gonna be a newborn one. In fact, is that the egg casing? That might be the egg it came out of that fell down off the leaf. That is about the size of their eggs. So if I don't see it on that first chewed leaf, I'm gonna continue to follow the plant up. But I don't just automatically go up to the next leaf. Well, actually, maybe I do. What is that? Well, it is. Oh my goodness, y'all. Found ya. It is a itty bitty newborn tomato hornworm. So that's proof that it's a really, really good idea to keep a close eye on your garden during the growing season so that you can catch them as soon as they hatch. And if a moth came by and laid its eggs on this tomato plant, it probably laid its eggs on other tomato plants as well. So I am really gonna be looking close because this is the early stage when they've done hardly any damage. Perfect time to smush them. Sometimes I'll uh, look for another nightshade and put the caterpillar on it so that the moth can pupate because I do like the moth. The moth is a nice nighttime pollinator, but the caterpillar does cause a lot of damage. So at this point, because I don't check down here often enough, this one's gonna get smushed. Odin, are you, are you harvesting potatoes from the garden? Mm -hmm. With your wagon. Mm -hmm. So we've already started pulling these plants up and there was a plant right here and as you can see there's just potatoes on potatoes on potatoes on potatoes on potatoes on potatoes on and there's a lot of fire ants so we got to be careful a whole bunch of rotten ones in here oh rotten ones interesting all right we pulled them all yeah. What do you got there, buddies? Kale. Mmm. Kale. Having a snack? Yeah. That looks like some yummy potatoes.
I got this one. It is super cool. My reaction was like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I think that would be my reaction too. That's a cool Dad, potato. I couldn't help but notice this beautiful flower behind Liam when he was talking. This had no blooms on it just a day ago. Covered in blooms. Gorgeous. Oh yeah, the pollinators love it. It's Agastache. It's a very, very popular pollinator plant. I see the bee, Mommy. You see the bee? Yeah. Oh, we like the bees. What is it, a bumblebee? Huh? Sweet little bumblebee. Uh-oh, what did you guys find? Just some delicious things in the garden. What's that? I forgot what they're called. Ground cherries. I just glanced over and saw a couple of yellow and I was like, wait a minute, there's a bunch of yellow. <gasps> Are you eating all of the ground cherries I just picked to bring in in your wagon? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I guess we'll have plenty this year, so eat up. Just watch. <laughs> Where'd it go? What does it taste like? Besides mulch, what does it taste like? How would you describe it to somebody who's never tasted one? I don't really know. Like, it tastes good for me, and also, a li like, it tastes a little sour because it wasn't completely hey. ripe. But um, hey. I see you. It was really. What does it taste like? <laughs> Sour? Mm -hmm. And it's sweet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, like, the texture, like, the inside, when you, like, pop it open, the insides are all, like, many pieces. I don't know how to... Describe. There's a lot of little seeds in it. I think that's what yeah. you're detecting. Yeah. Hey. Odin, be careful not to spill that. I'm gonna get some peppers for the dinner tonight. Well, maybe just one, because these are spicy. Mmm. <laughs> so so this pepper is a black Hungarian and it has a 2,500 Scoville unit. I love that my friend uses the Scoville unit right on the pepper tags. It makes it so much easier for me to know what I'm and remember what I'm growing. <laughs> so this volunteer cherry tomato plant has gotten out of hand. Uh, I've got a tomato cage in there somewhere holding it up primarily, but some of the vines have gone down. And I will say it again, tomatoes are not bushes, they're not trees, they are vines. They want to grow like this. This is their preferred way to grow. But we try to keep them all neat and tidy so it'll be easy to collect the tomatoes. So I'm gonna try to tidy this up as best I can without breaking any main branches. All right, so it's not pretty, but it'll help. It definitely removed some of the plant material from the garden bed so the squash can take that space. And I've got them just pulled inside of the tomato cage gently so I didn't break too much.